Greetings, Pokey fans! Michael here, and welcome to my ultimate Pokemon Legends Arceus, excuse me, Arcus tier list. It's the ultimate tier list because it's a tier list list. I'll be making several tier lists about various aspects from Pokemon Legends Arceus. In case it wasn't obvious, these tier lists will show off a bunch of spoilers like new Pokemon, new forms, new characters, and some story details at times. So if you want to avoid those, then this is not the video for you. I'll start with a tier list of new Pokemon and new forms. And this tier list will be based on strictly my personal opinions on them. I'm not going to talk about battle viability. Watch Wolfie VGC if you want to know that. I don't know that. <laughs> the significance of each tier is S tier is that I love them. A tier is that I like them. B is that I'm neutral. C is that I don't like them or have some kind of complaint. And then D is I really don't like them. Might even hate them. First off, we have Hisuian Growlithe. And this is one that I'll be putting, I'm gonna put it in B tier. I don't really dislike it, but I definitely don't. I've seen some people talk about how they think it's really cute, but it doesn't have eyes. I mean, it does have eyes. It's just, you can't see them. And I have personally always been someone who thinks something is more cute if it has big eyes. Next, Hisuian Arcanine. I'm gonna have to go C tier. I feel kind of bad, but hear me out. First off, Fire Rock typing is horrible. I think I would have liked a version of Arcanine that was not Fire Rock type because I used one for a little bit and the typing's just so bad, I ditched it. Additionally, I don't, super love the design. It's kind of like they just took regular Arcanine and then made its fur get pointy. I mean, they made it a bit darker red, but I feel like they could have done something more interesting with it. And then just a personal vendetta, its boss fight was by far the hardest for me to complete. So a little bitter about that. Sui and Voltorb, I'm gonna put in the A tier. I like seeing an electric grass type that's not just Rotom. I think it makes sense doing a Voltorb variant that's wooden. I know in a previous video, I said that I don't think Voltorb and Electro deserve any variants, but that was before I considered the idea of making an old one based on old Pokeballs. So. That I think is kind of cool. And I like how it's all happy. I think that's cute. As for Hisuian Voltorb, I'm gonna put it in the neutral. I understand that original Voltorb is angry and then original Electrode is happy. And then they swapped it for the Hisuian form. But I don't know, I just like the jolly mood of Hisuian Voltorb a lot more than I like the angry mood of Hisuian Electrode. Ha ha, it is I, Gurantib boy. What's going on today? Do you like Friends? I haven't watched much of it, but it seems funny. What? No, not the show, like actual Friends. Oh, well, yes, good ones. And how about Dragons? Well, of course. Well, that's perfect, because the sponsor of this video is Friends and Dragons. It's a free-to-play strategy-based RPG available on mobile devices. Set within a fantasy world, it combines hero collection and strategy puzzler gameplay. For hero collection, there's a diverse cast of over 150 in the game, all of which can be made more powerful by equipping items and upgrading their skills. As for the strategic gameplay, it's really interesting and unique. Rather than move all the heroes individually, you select one hero who moves the rest of the team itself, allowing for endless choices and unique strategies. And you know what else it has? Co-op mode. Ooh, are we gonna claim some victories together? Of course not. We'll be claiming all the victories. I actually set up a guild for our viewers to join so they can join us in our quest for glory. Friends and Dragons also has lots of special limited events, like the Chase the Dragon event, which is unlocked for new players once they complete the tutorial. Take on Bloodfang the Evil Red Dragon Brood. I'm in. How do I get it? Scan the QR code on screen or head to the link in the description below to download Friends and Dragons. And if you do, you'll get one free summon, daily potions and gold for free, and an exclusive offer. Sweet. Shall we start our co-op play after trivia tonight? Sounds good. I'll bring my A game to both. Ta-ta! Next, we have a Suey and Typhlosion. This is probably gonna be my most controversial take. Uh, I don't really like it. Um, I do like it more when it has its flames. I think that's really cool. And I'm glad that Typhlosion got something. Uh, I think it deserves that, but it, it looks like Betty Boop. The curls on the side, I just can't see anything but Betty Boop wearing a large and tacky necklace. But I am just not a fan of Hisui and Typhlosion. I'm sorry, guys. I don't hate it. The fire looks cool. What is Betty Boop? Next, we got Hisui and Quillfish. I am gonna put this in B tier. I don't dislike it at all. Um, and I'm glad that Quillfish got something. I think they could have done something a bit more interesting than just making it 
angrier. Next is Hisuian Sneasel. Now this one's kind of a mixed bag for me. I don't hate the design, but I also don't really think Sneasel should have gotten something. So I'm gonna put it in C tier. Sneasel already got Weavile, which is one of the best ice types in the game to this day. So giving it a variant, I didn't think was necessary, but it's also not a variant that makes sense. To my knowledge, all of the other regional variant forms are Pokemon that were not originally findable in native Sinnoh. Yes, Scyther could be found in Platinum and Cleavor's a new evolution, but that's like, Maybe Black Augurite is extremely rare in modern day Sinnoh. So like it just, you just can't get a Cleavor even though you can still get a Scyther. Voltorb wasn't there, Growlithe wasn't there. I don't think Quillfish was there, but Sneasel was in the native Sinnoh decks from the beginning. Cyrus's main Pokemon is Weavile. Like it wasn't even a platinum expansion Pokemon. It's just always been in Sinnoh. So Sneasel getting a regional variant doesn't make sense. Next is Origin Form Dialga. This one I'm neutral to. Uh, I don't love it, but I think it, it it's a it's a pretty cool way of making it look more like Akus. I think the neck thing's a little weird, but I don't strongly dislike it, and I really like the deep blue that it has. Palki, on the other hand, looks freaking stupid. Why did they give it hooves? I don't understand why they gave it, like just its front legs being horse legs doesn't make any sense. Dialga, its legs are like its front legs, but longer and pointier, sure. Horse legs? Arceus doesn't have hooves. I think that's, and also it doesn't have arms. It's so strange. Like it's, it's like they tried to make a centaur, but then just cut off its arms. It's very weird. I don't like it. Next is Hisuian Samurott. And this is one that I'm gonna, mm, I'll put it in B tier. I was thinking about C tier because my thing with Samurott is that I don't dislike it. I don't think the design looks bad. I have no really like, there's nothing that bothers me about it aside from the fact that I think they could have done better because to me, it looks like they took regular Samurott and just made it edgy. There aren't any really dramatic design changes aside from making its shells black and red and spikier and giving it a different beard, that's it. I feel like they could have deviated substantially more and made something that was more interesting, but I don't dislike it. Like if that was what Samurott was from the start, it'd be pretty cool. Hisui and Lilligan, I like Hisui and Lilligan. This is a regional variant that I like where it's a pretty dramatic change, but it's still clearly the same Pokemon. Th that's the kind of regional variant that I like. And I think making it like a dance fighter is, I think it's cool. Hisui and Basculin is going in B tier because I'm kind of torn about it. There are things I like about it. There are things I don't like. I like that it's more timid than original Basculin. I think that's interesting. I hate that that same timidness makes it so freaking difficult to catch because it's already hard enough to catch stuff in the water and stuff that runs from you in the water. So if you miss, you lose your chance. Very frustrating. I think the light colored stripe and light colored eye look pretty cool though. Um, but my frustrations with trying to catch it are keeping me from putting it in A tier. Hisuian Zorua and Hisuian Zoroark, they are both S tier Pokemon. They are very, very cool. So dark, so terrifying, but I think they're really cool Pokemon. I love the designs. First ever ghost normal Pokemon. I think they're really cool. Hisuian Braviary is going in B tier. Um, I don't hate it, uh, but it's kind of like a Samurott situation where I feel like they could have done more to make it interesting. I also don't love the psychic flying type. I mean, it's still mostly like a regular Braviary, which is both a problem and a good thing because regular Braviary is very cool. This is regular Braviary, but gray and with glowing goggles. So it's not much of a difference, which means they didn't really screw it up, but I don't think it's better than regular Braviary. Asui and Avalug, I gotta put it here. I gotta put it in C tier. I like the shovels that it has. I think that's cool. And I like the darker color on the side, but it's ice rock type, which is so freaking bad. I feel like I would have rather seen an Avalog just be pure rock type, just ditch the ice type entirely. And also I still hold a, hold a bit of resentment for the boss battle against it, where I was gonna win and I threw my Pokeball at it and it just returned my Pokeball to me. It, it didn't it didn't let me fight it. And if I had gotten to fight it, I would have won. And I still am very bitter about that. Asui and Sligu and Gudra are interesting. Gudra I'm putting in A tier and Sligu I'm putting in B tier. Here's my reasoning. The designs, I don't love the designs. I love the idea of making the slug Pokemon become snail Pokemon. I like that decision, but I feel like they could have done more. I feel like they could have changed colors, changed number of antenna, that kind of thing. But instead they just slapped the shells on them and then they were done. However, for Gudra especially, 
I am quite sentimentally attached to these Pokemon now because I used an Alpha Hisuian Gudra on my main playthrough team and it was really freaking good. Dragon Steel, fantastic typing. So even though I don't love the designs, I'm very fond of my personal Gudra. So that's why I'm putting my Gudra in A tier and Sligu can stay in B tier. Hisuian Decidueye is uh, my favorite of all the new Pokemon by a significant margin. It is so cool. I love that they finally made a grass type Pokemon that's main aesthetic is Autumn Leaves. I know there's Sawsbuck, but like that's only some of the time. They nailed Decidueye. I love the type of hat, you know, like the wide Japanese hat and like the cloak instead of just like, it's way, like, oh my gosh. It looks, it, I just, I love everything of it. The triple arrows attack where it front flips and then shoots the arrows. It's just, it's so good. I don't know if I love it more than regular Decidueye. I think they're just two different versions of the same thing that are both really awesome. Weird Ear, you can go in A tier. I think it's cool that they made Stantler actually interesting. I think it's fun that the aesthetic is like an old wizard. Psychic Normal's not my favorite typing, but I think it's a cool Pokemon. Cleavor's gonna go in A tier as well. I don't really think we needed another Scyther evolution, but I gotta say for the first boss fight in Pokemon history where you fight against a Pokemon and it's one with giant axes for hands, that's like a really great way to start the game and really demonstrate the new level of danger in the Hisui region. Sneasler's going in C tier. I don't hate it. I already talked about how I didn't think Sneasel should have gotten a variant and its evolution being Sneasel but tall could have done better, I think, but I don't fully hate it. I do like how you can climb cliffs with it. I think that's a really creative traversal decision in this game, but that's really all it's got going for it, in my opinion. Enamorous is fine. I'm putting it in B tier. I don't like it. Like it's pretty ugly, but so are all the other genies. And I think it's out of left field that they made a new genie that's female. So it's like, all right, I respect that they did that. It's Therian form though is pretty ugly. <laughs> I don't like despise it, but it's, not great. Overquill is going in A tier. I don't love it. Like if Overquill was just a Pokemon introduced, like an independent Pokemon Quillfish never existed, I wouldn't like it very much. The dude's kind of ugly. However, I am fond of this Pokemon for a couple reasons. The first is that it's a Quillfish evolution, which is something we should have gotten when Quillfish came out. But also its name is Overquill, which might be my favorite Pokemon name of any Pokemon ever. It's such a good pun. Next is Basculegion. Basculegion is S tier. Basculegion is awesome. I love that Basculin got an evolution. I love the story behind it. I used one on my team and had a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to surf around on it and double jump. Really cool Pokemon. Very glad they made it. It also has its female form, which I'm putting in A tier because I also really like Basculegion, but I think the male form looks a bit better. I might feel the opposite, if they had the female form's eyes be angry, like Basculegion, but instead it just looks sleepy. And then finally we have Ursaluna. I'm not the biggest fan of Ursaluna. I don't hate it, but it's just kind of like a a pudgy Ursa ring with, with mud on it. And also it was kind of annoying to use it in the game. The next tier list is the shiny forms of the new Pokemon and forms. I will be rating just the colorations. My personal thoughts about the specific species do not matter. Hisuian Growlithe and Hisuian Arcanine, they're B tier, they're fine. They stuck with the coloration from original Growlithe and Arcanine shinies, which were fine also. They're noticeably different, but they don't really pop in a way that I'm very fond of. Asuian Voltorb and Electrode, I quite like. I like how the gray coloring references the heavy balls. Kind of like how the blue of original shiny Voltorb and Electrode references great balls. So I think it's cool that they stuck with that and referenced another Pokeball. Asuian Typhlosion um, is a bad shiny. I'm sorry. It's not super noticeable and they just kind of made its shiny more like regular Typhlosion, which I don't love. And a big thing for me is that the flames are the same color. If the flames were a different color in battle, much higher ranking immediately. But like when its flames are on and it's nighttime, it's like really difficult to tell the difference. So I don't really like it. Isuian Quillfish and Overquill. Gonna toss them together. Uh, great shinies. I think they're really cool. I like how it kind of makes them look more like metal floating water mines. I It's very noticeable. And so I'm a fan. 
Hisui and Sneasel's shiny. Not a huge fan of Hisui and Sneasel, but it has got a dope shiny. The dark coloring contrasted with the bright yellow looks really good. And I have one. Well, I did before I evolved it, so I like that too. Origin Dialga, you go A tier. It's basically the same coloring as shiny Dialga, but it's a lot more vibrant, fills a lot more of its body, and I think that looks really good. Origin Palkia is horrible. Just like Origin Palkia normal, it's a bad shiny and they didn't change it for its origin form, so it remains a bad shiny. Asui and Samurott's shiny, I don't really like it. Here's my reasoning. If you compare it to a regular Hisui and Samurott, it's a pretty dramatic difference and it looks cool. I like the idea of changing the shells. I feel like they could have changed the body, but they didn't. And it's certainly a better shiny than regular Samurott's shiny. But my issue with it is that it makes it look a lot like just regular Samurott. That was my complaint about the design of Asui and Samurott is that it doesn't look much different from regular Samurott. You turn it shiny, you make its shell white, which is not far from like the beige yellow that original Samurott has. And at a glance, one might think that's a regular Samurott. It makes it look like it's back to normal. And I personally want to see the Hisuian forms look more different because then it's more like a new Pokemon. Asui and Lilligans, it's fine. Um, it's not super noticeable. I think they're going the same route and making it look similar to the coloration of Lilligan. I don't think it's bad by any means, but it's kind of hard to notice. I haven't seen a whole lot of Hisui and Lilligan in the game. There was the boss fight where it's yellow the whole time, and then I got one for the Pokedex that I boxed immediately. So if I had a momentary glance at this, I may not notice that it's the shiny form. Asui and Basculin, shiny's not great. I know they're doing the same thing as the shiny for regular Basculin, trying to match it, but that was a bad shiny to begin with. Just make it a bit different shade of green. That's not very good. In fact, no, I'm, I'm dropping this to D tier. It's, it's bad. Asui and Zorua and Zoroark though, once again, have nailed it. These are fantastic shinies bright, vibrant, very noticeable, works really well. Make just changing the like hair color, but also making the fur darker as well. Like, like, <laughs> I don't know how anyone could dislike those shinies. Those are fire. And Hisuian Braviary, well, I didn't love it. Excellent shiny. Turning it all black and the bright electric blue glowing eyes. That is awesome. Electric blue and black is one of my favorite color schemes. And that's what that has. Asui Navalug's shiny is not very good. I'm sorry, I don't like it. I don't like that they just made its shovels orange, but also, at least for me personally, a lot of the photos on Cerebi.net of Pokemon, if they are partially transparent, it looks like they're orange. So kind of like this, when you look at a Pokemon in the Pokedex and Sword and Shield, if part of its body is transparent, it actually kind of looks like it's sort of orange. And that to me is what Avalug's shovels look like. There's, it's such a pale orange. It just looks, I, I, it looks off. Asui and Sligu and Gudra, while I'm very fond of Asui and Gudra, is the one I used, the shinies are awful. They turned the metallic shells brown, like a poop brown. And that was a bad decision just from the start. But what makes it even worse is that their bodies, I think they change extremely slightly, but it doesn't look like it. If they had changed their bodies to be the same coloration as shiny Gudra originally, then that would have been really good. Like I wouldn't have loved the brown shell decision, but that coloration for those shinies, which are very good shinies, would have been enough to put them in A tier. And with some of the other ones like Arcanine and Basculin, they made their shinies similar to the original forms shinies. Why didn't they do that with Sligu and Gudra? Instead, they just leave their bodies the same and change the shells to brown. Like, no, you should have made their bodies the pale yellow, like of original shiny Gudra. Like, it would look so much better. Shiny Hisui and Decidueye, yet another S tier. I know with the, th I know with the starters, they were kind of making their shiny forms colorations more similar to their originals regular forms. But I think with Samurott and Typhlosion, they're too close because their new designs are too close. Samurott just gets spiky and a different mustache. Typhlosion gets thinner and a different neck thing and Betty Boop hair. But Decidueye is more immediately noticeable as a different design and therefore it's already cool design looks even better with the dark forest green. I think it's great the autumn coloring is the base form. That's how it should be. So I think it's cool that the two versions of Hisui and Decidueye are autumn 
and not autumn leaves. They're kind of darker, so maybe like evergreen trees in the winter, that kind of thing. Both kind of reference colder weather. Like, it's so good. They nailed it. Weird Ear Shiny is uh, pretty ugly. Uh, it's not a so bad that it's not noticeable. And I know why they went with the green, because Shiny Stantler is green. But that shade of green is just not a good look, dude. On the other hand, Cleavor's shade of green looks very good. I like how they turned it green, kind of referencing Scyther, the yellow on parts of its body. Looks really cool. I think they could have changed the axe color, but I also think it works well, leaving it the same. Shiny Cleavor, very cool. Shiny Sneezler is not great. I don't hate it. I like the black and yellow of the hair and the claws, but that weird tan-ish color on its body, I don't like the color very much. And Amorous's shinies are, they're not my favorite. I don't hate them, but I think they could have deviated more. It still looks like, like this, the, it just looks like the regular and Amorous coloring just like swapped around, I think. I don't know, I don't love it. I don't despise it though. Basque Legion's shinies, I'll put them in A. I'll put both of them in A. I don't love them. I would have liked to see more differences, but I think the purple and the yellow look good. I just don't think they match that well with the green. You know what, no, sorry guys, I'm, I'm moving you to B tier. So they're noticeable changes, which is good, but they clash really bad with that green. I think maybe if the green part of its body had turned a more neutral color, then the yellow and purple would have popped more rather than one of them looking like a weird peas and corn and the other one, I don't know, the colors just are not very complimentary. And then Shiny Ursa Luna, uh, it's C tier. I don't despise it, but it's not super different. I, I just think it's a little bland. Also, before we move on to the next tier list, don't forget to subscribe. It'd be great, I'd appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Next tier list will be a quick one, the areas of the game. Not including the village and the ancient retreat, because those like, you're not really exploring those. The obsidian fieldlands are B tier. They're fine. I think it was pretty good how they made a very expansive normal land, <laughs> but it is also just kind of normal land. So it's not particularly intriguing. The Myrlands I'll toss in A tier. I was pretty impressed at the variety of terrain they could do where the whole premise is a swamp, but they've got like the different types of bogs. They've got some ruins. They've got the slopes. They've got the autumn forest where like the Rose Raid shows up. I think it's a pretty cool area. The coastlands are going in C tier. And that is because there are a lot of water. Anyone who's played this game knows that catching Pokemon in the water is hell. <laughs> you can never tell where exactly they are. You can't sneak up on anything. It's just very annoying. I like parts of the coastlands. I like its design, but I have to dock at points for being mostly water. The Coronet Highlands are going in A tier. I think they did a really good job of making Mount Coronet interesting. <laughs> After so many years of playing Sinnoh games, Mount Coronet, I'm like, I don't wanna deal with this dungeon climb anymore, but they designed it in a way that was really cool. I liked that Wayward Cave was part of it. The ancient quarry was interesting. And of course the temple, the Spear Pillar Temple, before it's destroyed, was very cool. And that's technically a part of this. So I'm gonna put it in a, in a tier. And the Alabaster Icelands, I'm gonna put them in A tier. I think at times parts of it kind of blends together, but Snowpoint Temple on the Hill is one of my favorite things in any Pokemon game. It looks so, so good and so massive. Just the scale is so much more imposing. Like there's not really been structures like that in Pokemon before. I mean, there has been like in Sword and Shield, but seeing a structure that was just a little pixel box in the past turn into that was so cool. And the final tier list will be characters from the game. I tried to get all the wardens, the leaders, all the captains in the galaxy team, the bandits, and just anyone that I thought was significant, at least to a certain degree. First, the bandits, Charm, Clover, and Coin, they are C tier. I like their designs. I think the face paint's pretty cool. I think their outfits are cool, but they're annoying. And they weren't ever really a threat because two of them only use one Pokemon and the other one only uses two. So it's like, what's the point of battling you when I have a full team of six Pokemon? Like this is not, a significant part of the story, but I like their design, so they're not in D tier. Kojita is S tier. She is our queen. She is Cynthia, but more mature and experienced, and we respect that. Adam is A tier. He's got the drip, and I think he's just a, a pretty cool dude. Arezu is also A tier. Uh, I think she's cute. I liked how they turned Mars into someone nice. 
Um, but that whole plot line with her, like doing things, it's like, oh, she's just kind of dumb. And also she doesn't offer just regular brown as a hair color. Actually, no, sorry, Razor, you're going down to B tier. Iskin is A tier. Uh, I love the story between him and Polina, um, how he saved her life and they formed a romance. Like, I think that's great. Um, but his excessive fear of ghosts was a little annoying and also illogical considering that his noble is a Basque legion. May is going in C tier, not because I dislike her at all, but because she was really boring. Like there were no interesting character traits of hers that I noticed. So it's kind of like, I don't really care about you. Melly sucks. Seba sucks. Melly being just an incorrigible douche canoe the entire time and Seba making her, ch making me chase her all over the place. Why did you make me go to the bottom of the map and then back to the temple? Like I get having me go through the temple. Yeah, story reason to go through the temple. Cool, sure, I'm fine with that. But making me go to the bottom of the map, just like talking about her like omniscience or what it, what word was it? I don't even know, but it was stupid. Akari was fine. Her facial expressions were pretty funny at various points. I uh, like how they gave her a real personality. Um, but she just became less and less relevant as the story went on. Benny sucks. Calling me an outsider, turning into some ninja, which made no sense. Just being a jerk the whole time. And his facial hair is so stupid. I bought a white headkerchief and then realized it made me look more like Benny and I changed my hat. This guy, I don't remember his name. Um, he's fine. Captain Celine is A tier. Rough and gruff on the outside, but in reality cares deeply for you. A Cyrus ancestor who looks just as evil, but is actually pretty chill. I like it. This guy is the one that you pay to get your inventory expanded and he is a con man. It gets exorbitantly expensive. Like, I hate him. He sucks so much. Commander Commodo is A tier. I think he's a really interesting character. Uh, the exile arc, I did not see coming at all. And I was kind of pissed at him when he did that. But then when you kind of step back and think about like how passionately he cares about keeping his village and his people safe. And when he doubts you, he, like he acts upon it. I mean, I gotta respect the man. Professor Laventon goes in A tier. I liked a lot of the Pokedex entries. Uh, I talk about it in my Dex entry video, but one of my favorites is when he's like, you know, Shaman turns into this sky form when it sniffs a particular flower. I sniffed the same flower, but alas, nothing changed. I just think that's hilarious. Pacel is A tier. I think she's cute. And also I was very entertained by the 100 medicinal leaks quest, like the camera cuts. She's like, oh, just a small request. 100 medicinal leaks just for making me laugh at that. She goes to A tier. Uh, Ray, I played as Ray. So instead of Ray, this is going to be me and therefore it's S tier. <laughs> Self-love is important. Sanqua, y'all already know, this is Karen's ancestor. And Karen is the only one that I would let speak to my manager, Sanqua, is the same. Tao Hua, this guy's annoying. Uh, all the convincing him to get stuff to expand the store and then it turns out he's just not working with the shopkeeper because he's upset that his adult daughter married the shopkeeper. Like, come on, man. The fighting lady, I also, uh, I forgot her name. Uh, she's fine. I just talked to her to get moves. Ginter is annoying. I don't despise him, but he's annoying. The prices for the Rotom things are exorbitant. And so many times he wants to sell me razor claws. Sell me other evolution items, man. I already have like six. Volo, Volo, I gotta say, man, I'm putting you in A tier. This is a major spoiler. So if you've watched this far, you better have beaten the game post game too. I did not see his twist coming caught me totally off guard. I was so mad at him. So I like kind of hated him, but then I got to realize like the writing with that is actually really good. So I got to respect him for that. Kalab is fine. Didn't make much of an impact on my story. Garrick, he's fine too. I thought he was kind of amusing, but also not much of an impact. Ingo is S tier. I was so excited when I saw another follower, like actually Ingo, and just the amount of emotions I felt when I wanted to tell him like, dude, I know who you are and I just couldn't. Oh, that was tough, but so good. Irida's A tier. I like Irida. She's cute. She's like impassioned, you know, her and Adam and it was just like, they really grew a lot as characters throughout the story. And I liked seeing that. Leon was, yeah, it was kind of annoying. Like not so bad that I like really disliked him, but he was just kind of annoying. And then Polina S tier, forgive me for simping, but so fine. And I loved the whole Growlithe story. I thought that was just, I, it was so emotional so raw like everything about it like the previous noble dying the 
new one like evolving to save his friends, Iskin saving her life, and now they have this forbidden Romeo and Juliet romance between the Diamond and Pearl clan, and also she's super hot. Yeah, Polina, probably my favorite warden of all of them. That's gonna wrap it up for my ultimate Pokemon Legends Aquas tier list. Thank you so much for watching. With an extra special thanks to my patrons over on Patreon who are helping support my channel independent of fluctuating YouTube ad rates. If you wanna help support me in the same way, the link is in the description below. Also, if you wanna check out some more of my fun Pokemon content, I recommend these videos here. All right, that's all I have for now. So until next time, big fans, gotta catch them all.